going to show you how you can write a code on your micro bit so you can control the servo um, in micro movements. So instead of just pressing A where it shoots to one position, you'll move in smaller movements. Like every time you click a button, it should go from, it should just move a tiny bit. So this is me clicking button B repeatedly, it would move it this direction. Then if I go back to A, it'll move it the other direction. This will be useful if you wanted to do something where you had a remote, say if you wanted to do remote control robot that had an arm that moves across and that you can move it slight. Say if you had a camera on top of a model Mars rover or something, you just wanted to move it a little bit at a time, you could use this program. So the first thing you do is you click into your new project and we can click servo micro control. Of the screen and it said it in front of you. So the first thing you could do is you can just show a number when the program starts up. You can set that to two. And this just means that on this display screen here, that it will display whatever number this is. I haven't downloaded it on yet. That's why it's saying zero for my last program number. The other thing you want to do is get your micro bit and your, your servo motor and connect it up as shown. So this is going to connect to zero. It could connect to the other ones, but you'd need to change that in your, your program. But for now, you're just going to leave it on zero. This will be connected to plus three volts, and this will be connected to zero ground or zero voltage. These two will always stay in the same position. They're just giving power to the servo motor. Also, if, you're, when you're, if you have the battery pack in the back, you need to make sure that's plugged in. Uh, unlike the other ones, you need a little bit more power for this, so you need to make sure that battery pack's plugged in and also make sure when you're finished at the end of the class, get that plugged back out as well again. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a variable. We're going to go, so that's down on this button here, variables, click on it, make a variable, and we're going to click servo position. And... Um, we're going to start off by saying just when the program starts up, our servo position is automatically going to go to 90 degrees. The reason I'm picking 90 is because it'll have a position from zero on this side right around to 180 degrees. So as soon as your program starts up, your servo will go into the middle of them two positions. Not 100% essential to put that in, but it's nice because it just positions everything in the center for us. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have, if you press button A, it's going to increase this variable by, we're going to say four degrees. So every time it's going to move four degrees. So what you do is you go back into your variables and you're going to say set servo position. We're going to go actually change servo position by four. If button A is pressed. Now let's just copy and paste this rather than dragging out the same programs again. Control and C. Click over here, Control and V. We're going to say when button B is pressed, you could drag these th out individually. This is just a little shortcut so you can do it a bit faster. It's going to change our servo position by not four this time, four is moving this direction. We want it to go the opposite direction. So we put in by minus four. So you put in the minus symbol and then four. So what we have is we started off at 90 degrees, then we click here, it's gonna to move to 94 degrees. We click button A again, it'll move to 98 degrees and so forth and just keep going up. Now, there's one small issue, this program will work but the only problem is these servos only have a range of 180 degrees. So they, can, they can't they can move any further than that. When it hits 180, it'll stop. So if you keep, kept pressing button A and you were at 180 degrees, you pressed it again, you'd get to 184 degrees. It's not going to move at all. Um, but if you keep pressing that button, it could get up to 200 degrees. When you start minusing, when you press B, in order to get it back, you need to get it back as far as 180 degrees again. And so it can go backwards. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but maybe it'll make more sense when I show you in the program here now. 
So another thing we want to use is our logic. So we want to put certain conditions to that. So what we want to say is when it gets to 180 degrees, I want you to stop increasing the number. So we'll say if what we're looking to replace true at here was we're looking to go, if it goes above 180 degrees, stop increasing our number. So the way we do this is we go back into our logic, we take our comparisons, and then we're going to go back to our variable, take our servo position variable, put it in there. So if our servo position is greater than or equal to, I'm going to select that symbol there. So it's greater than or equal to 180 degrees. We want to move it back. So if it goes up to 184, we want to immediately move it back to 180. So we're going to say, go back to our variables. We're going to say set servo position to 180. So that means as soon as you've gone above 180, it'll bring it right back to 180. We can test that out over on this side here. Now, they have a servo. Sorry, I actually forgot to put in the bit about the actual servo motor, so we'll take this in. Um, okay, also forever we want servo right pin P02, 180 degrees. We don't want it to go to that. We're going to take our variable. And this is our thing, a variable meaning it can change depending on what, what these programming parts say. So we're going to change that, set our servo position to whatever the number we currently have on servo position is. So let's just see how that works out. If we click on this one here to sim simulate it, you can see B is going. We see when B is pressed, it's going to decrease it by minus four. Now you'll see that servo position will keep moving around 360 degrees, but we need it to stop at 180. So if you see, if we go this direction with A, click it enough, it should stop because we've it set that if it gets greater than 180 degrees, it should just stay at 180. You can see it keeps flicking back in that direction. So all we do here is we click on this program, Control and C, then click Control and B drag that through here. Now I'm copying the same program because all I need to do is just modify this. So now this time we're going to say if the servo position is less than or equal to zero degrees, so if it goes down to minus four degrees, we want to change that to zero. Now it will work, the th thing will work if you don't put all this stuff in, but it won't work properly. You could, you'll, you will have issues in it. If you keep pressing A, it'll just get stuck in the same position till you've pressed enough Bs for it to come back again. So um, all you do then is you just download that onto your computer, like so, click that, right click it, show in folder, and then you just take that and you drag it over here let it download and then you'll first of all know that the, this whole thing is working just when you see two appear up on your screen so you'll see we've two here it set itself automatically into it set itself automatically to 90 degrees there which is dead in the center and then if i start clicking this click my buttons you'll see it'll just move at a fraction of a turn every time. Now you can change. I've decided to change your servo position by four degrees because that's a nice little small movement. You could change that to 10 uh, and it'll just do a bigger movement every time. You could change it to one and it'll do a smaller movement every time.